President Obama right now uh, could be taking unilateral action as yesterday the British said they're not going to come with us if we go. Uh, the French are also considering it, but right now it's just President Obama, which is a very different tack than he took in 2012. Let's flash back to what President Obama said last year about going at it alone. With respect to Syria, uh, what's happening in Syria is heartbreaking and outrageous. And what you've seen is the international community mobilize against the Assad regime for us to take military action. Uh, unilaterally, as some have suggested, uh, or uh, to uh, think that somehow there is some simple solution, uh, I think is a mistake. Eric, yeah. isn't that about what we're going to do? I got to tell you, I listened to John Kerry's um, his, his announcement today. I listened to President Obama also. I, I think they just figured this out. This is about ego. This is about President Obama's ego. He wants to save face because he said, I'm going to draw a red line a year ago. It's been crossed twice. Though. So he's more inclined to go now because it's violated his red line. And it's also about him defending America, America's ego when he says we either have to do this or North Korea and Iran are going to see that we're weak. So we have to prove that we're, we're not weak. So we're going to go kill a bunch of people in Syria. We're not even sure we're going to kill the right people in Syria. We just have to do it because... Because we're America. I think this is a bad idea. We have to check the you know box, I, I agree. Guess. I agree that it's a bad idea. I don't like it because I think, look, the Middle East is a mess, and I don't think us getting in there is going to necessarily solve any questions. But when I heard today the president, I hear John Kerry say, look, this is really about Iran. That's why I said to Ed Henry, this is a proxy war with Iran, and that you have got to be very clear with Iran. Don't get the wrong message here, buddy. Don't think that you can get away with using chemical weapons or nukes without... An immediate and strong response from the United States. I think, you know, okay, I, if that's what you're doing, you, you get more buy-in from me. I just don't get the buy-in for getting involved in the Syrian mess, though. Greg, Syrians have been gassed. John yeah. Kerry today said it was a travesty. He went on and on. But we didn't see that kind of reaction when four Americans died in Benghazi. A little bit of cognitive dissonance coming out of Pennsylvania Avenue? Yeah, it's kind of strange. I mean, how much does this matter uh, to the United States? Since Syria happened, what have we not been talking about? It was just last week, and it rhymed with the word Egypt. Egypt vanished like a Matt Damon movie. We don't talk about it. The Middle East is essentially a lazy Susan. You spin it, and there's always going to be a new uh, 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 strife or, or, or a new crisis that you can find. And when that one goes away, another one. I want to bring up another thing. I just mm -hmm. I have to congratulate President Obama. He's invented a new strategy. It's the opposite of the element of surprise. It's called the element of here it comes. Uh, you tell them when the attack is going to happen. They move all their stuff into a basement. And then you, and then you go, ah, never mind. Uh, and then Hassad's probably left Syria. He's probably in the East Village getting pizza. <laughs> One more thing. Prime Minister Cameron hasn't, uh, this is the first time that a prime minister has lost a war vote in the House of Commons since 1782. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that because Harry Reid back then blamed it on the Tea Party. <laughs> Katie, General Vallely returned from Syria, and he actually said that it's believed that Assad has left the country. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so let's say we do go in for a couple of days and send some missiles into camel behinds, and we can check the box and right. save face. President Obama can look tough. Who will replace him if right. we do take him out? Or let's say we don't. Isn't that a bit embarrassing for the United States? It is, and we talked about this yesterday. We talked about how there's no plan B. There's no replacement. We've seen the consequences that come when you don't have a plan B. We've seen it in Egypt. We've seen it in Libya. We've seen it all over the place. But my, you know, it's interesting today. You had John Kerry, Secretary of State now, saying that Assad is a thug and a murderer. Two years ago, you had former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton saying Assad was a reformer. Mm -hmm. um, you also, I thought, you know, where was President Obama today? Why was the first major address to the country about Syria coming from the Secretary of State? I mean, mm -hmm. John Kerry's speech was pretty powerful, whether you agree with it or not. It was powerful. He yeah. was alone at the podium. He talked directly to the American people. While President Obama gives this four-minute talk while he's surrounded by other people and distracted, which he wouldn't let the press cover live, by the way. And he says a couple things with this kind of, you know, lazy attitude of, well, we just have to do something. Why is it that the Secretary of State looks like President yeah. Kerry while President Obama I, is yeah. waiting to tell us what's o going on? Obama was leading from behind Kerry. Nice. Exactly. Let me say, you guys, you guys got to stop hating on Obama in this situation. There's such a huge difference between what's going on in Syria now with the use of chemical weapons 
and what was going on well, a year well, ago well, or two hold, years ago. Hold on and a second. For you to That's jump very that different. Was the same thing. Juan, we saw a video of Saddam Hussein gassing a village in Habjala, and Democrats sat around and said, "Oh, oh no, the same Democrats now, didn't oh, think that's it was what important." This is about. You're trying to get payback well, for what happened not, with, with Juan, I don't weapons think we of mass destruction in Iraq I don't and the failure think, of the Bush administration. I don't think we should it? invade one. Here's what I'm saying: oh. This president has let the Muslim Brotherhood rise up in Egypt. He has let Al Qaeda rise up in Libya. What <laughs> happens? Who is going to replace Assad? There's no game plan. There's no follow-up plan. He hasn't made the case to the country or to Congress. So what are we straight. doing? Of course we have a plan, but the thing is, you, you sit here and everybody's acting like they know exactly what to do. They're going to blame Obama if he goes in or if he doesn't go in. I don't think that's fair All to right. Obama.